Hello, friends, and welcome to our program today. I'm Dr. Willie Nutt with San Jose Word of Faith Christian Center. It's always a pleasure uh, to join you uh, on, our, on the airwaves each week. Uh, we're going to be um, continuing with the message that we began a few weeks ago. It may have been last week. I'm not sure at this point. Uh, entitled, From Faith to Faith. From Faith to Faith. And uh, at that time, we were talking about the, uh, the Pool of Mara, how the, the Lord had uh, given Moses instructions on how to make it palatable so they could drink it. The children of Israel had just come out of the land of bondage across the Red Sea. And uh, now they're three um, days into the wilderness, and they had run out of water, so they were quite thirsty. And the pools of Mara were bitter, and uh, so they would begin to cry out to Moses uh, for him to help. I'm just going to reread the, the final verse that we looked at last week, Exodus, the 15th chapter, verse uh, 25. And he cried unto the Lord, he being Moses, and the Lord showed him a tree of which when he had cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. And uh, there he made for them a statute and, and an ordinance. And there he proved them. So he being the Lord proved the children of Israel. Sometimes the Lord would allow us to have challenges to prove us and test us uh, to let us know what's within us. Praise God. And uh, uh, where we need to develop and to grow to another level in Christ Jesus. According to our text, the purpose of the experience of Myra was uh, for testing, or perhaps a, a better word would be proving the children of uh, Israel. God allows tests to come into our lives for the purpose of proving the quality of our faith. Stop for a moment. The Lord can allow it to come to any one of us to prove the quality of our faith. Uh, whenever a test is successfully completed, God directs us to the word that was exercised by the challenge. In this case, Moses affirmed the covenant of healing, for in the subsequent verse, uh, it is described by the Lord. And so this is the first time the covenant of healing has come into play. And in Exodus 15 and 16, we actually have the, the promise that was made by the Lord. And it begins, I'm going to go to the part where it says, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thou God. Uh, the Lord uh, likes obedience. And in order for us to receive the bounty that he has set aside for us, the benefits and blessings that he's promised us, he's, he expects obedience from us. And throughout the Old Testament, uh, if you check, you'll find that obedience was a watchword for the Lord. And uh, if you want him to be in your corner, you want him to assist you, you have to obe be obedient to his word. Um, and we'll, let's read it again. If thou wilt dil diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thou God, Exodus, the 15th chapter, the 16th verse. And we'll do that, and the second uh, caveat uh, is, and we'll do that which is right in his sight. Number three, and we'll give ear to his ear. The number of things he's asking. And keep all his commandments, not, all, not some of them, all the commandments. This is what he's telling the children of Israel. And uh, he's saying, it's an if, then, else. And so often people are not used to that nowadays. Uh, the Lord gives us the if, then he'll respond. Otherwise, he will not. Praise the Lord. So that's how I remember this. It's a number of components that have to be met in, for us to uh, believe and receive from the hand of God. Uh, I will put none of these, the Lord speaking here, if you met the conditions, these diseases, diseases upon you, uh, of which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am the Lord thou God that healeth thee. So you hear people saying that. Uh, Jehovah Jireh, I'm the Lord, the God that provides. and uh, um, uh, So this is one of the covenant names, Jehovah Rapha, is the word that's actually used here, Rapha. Uh, the first covenant that God to introduce Israel um, to after their baptism in the Red Sea was the covenant of healing right after Myra. The phrase, I am the Lord that healeth thee, in the Hebrew is God's covenant name, Jehovah Rapha meaning the Lord, your healer, or the Lord, your physician. So we have a right, if you met the conditions that the Israelis were told they need to meet, then we can do the same thing when we need healing in our bodies. God is no respecter of persons. And if uh, you meet the conditions that the Israelis were told to meet, then the Lord will also meet your conditions as well today. God is not just concerned about the development of our spirit man, and today, it sounds like that's all some people think about. Spirit is spirit. 
No, he, he, we live in a physical body, uh, and uh, the Lord needs to respond to us in that uh, venue also. So if your back is hurting, uh, if your neck is hurting, legs don't work the way they should, it's going to have an adverse effect on our ability to be able to declare the word and to be an apt representative of the kingdom of God. Uh, God is not just concerned about the development of our spirit man, but he is also concerned about the conditions of our physical bodies. Uh, Jesus con included both spiritual and physical healing in salvation, and the story follows in Mark, the second chapter. There are many today, unfortunately, that try and say that uh, healing has nothing to do with God. God doesn't care about nothing that has to do with the physical. All he cares about is the spiritual. It's funny how they put those in categories like that. Spiritual, you can't see that, so how would you know that anything took place? You know, it takes faith to even believe that God did that. But it's a little easier to believe when a healing takes place in a physical body. Uh, you see a person, they can't walk, they get prayed for. A few days later, they're walking again, or they got terrible sickness and some disease or coughing and whatever. A few days, they're up and about again. Uh, so it's easier to understand and believe that than it is for me to say, you told me something I can't see. Uh, the Lord is blessing my spirit. So, so how, demonstrate to me how you're blessing your spirit. Well, I have love and I have peace that I exhibit. Do you do it all the time or sometimes? You know, so it's all these other questions that are raised because it's something you can't see. It's something you have to take as a, a grain of salt, something you have to take by faith. Uh, but when it's healing, it's easier to see. And that's why I believe Jesus did a lot of miracles during his sojourn here in the earth realm. Uh, uh, the, when people saw him coming, uh, they would, uh, great multitudes would follow him, thousands of people, uh, because they saw that when he laid hands on people who were blind, they could see. When they hands on people that were crippled, they could walk. Uh, and then the, the testimonies of others and friends and associates and acquaintances uh, would relay and share with them about what they know about Jesus. Uh, even in the woman at the well, uh, she went into the city because this, Jesus had shared something with her that uh, nobody else would know about the men that she had been with and all the husbands she had. And uh, there's a song, Kiss Me. We used to sing when I was a youngster. Uh, Come see a man from Galilee. If you're in trouble, he'll set you free. Oh, 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 you need to know him. And that's basically what uh, the woman said at the well to her friends. And a whole multitude of people came out to see Jesus, uh, the great prophet, praise God, who had come into an area that usually wouldn't accept him uh, to the Samaritan people, although he was a Jew. But when they saw the miracles, the signs, and the wonders, that he was doing, they all, would come, they all came to hear a man that could prophesy and foretell the future and it would come to pass. And so and they did just on the word of one woman, a Samaritan woman who had listened to him and had engaged him. And he had shared with her a word of knowledge and uh, a word of wisdom in just a few moments. And from that, it pricked her heart. And uh, that's what I mean by the spiritual. The spiritual part has to have a, an element of supernatural that goes with it in order for it to have any kind of meaning uh, to people. And so here, the Lord Jesus is revealing to us the first covenant, the covenant of healing, Jehovah Rampha. And then in the book of Mark, uh, the second chapter, New Testament, Mark, the second chapter, the Lord Jesus is taking it on. Something that we need to embrace and something we need to believe those who are part of this uh, dispensation of grace. He didn't kick it to the side. He didn't throw it away. He continued healing uh, even during the time, the 33 years he was here in the earth realm, he continued to heal people. And the apostles, uh, after he left, they continued. They continued to do all things, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And that's exactly what the apostles did. And so, so I don't know where this new stuff is coming from. That uh, Where are you getting that that God doesn't do any supernatural? Uh, where are you getting that that, that all went out with the apostles? Uh, Jesus said they're supposed to teach it to all of those teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. Uh, the, the last few verses of the book, the 20th chapter of the book of Matthew, and then he reiterates it in other gospels as well. That this is something the Lord expects to continue. Uh, and you don't govern what God can do based upon what's happening in your life. You govern it based upon what the Word says. And that means you just need to line up with the Word if you want to get some of the other bounty that God has promised to us in this dispensation of grace. So Mark, the second chapter, verse 1 reads as following. And again, he entered uh, into Capernaum. This is referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. After some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. Notice this, that people spread the word. 
Because here comes the great healer. This is the great prophet. He did notable feats. Let's come see what he's going to do. Second verse, Mark uh, 2 and 2. And straightway many were gathered together, uh, insomuch that they, uh, they, they, that there was no room left to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them. So uh, he was in his house, and there was no room for them to come into the house. And uh, Jesus was preaching the word. Let's go to the third verse. And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. So there was one guy who couldn't get in close proximity to Jesus. So his four, four of his friends picked him up and carried him over the crowd to get him to Jesus. Look at the fourth verse. And when they could not uh, come nigh unto him for the press, they, they tried their best. They couldn't get to him. There's so many people that were there thronging the Lord Jesus. They couldn't get through the crowds, although they tried. So notice this. Uh, they uncovered the roof where Jesus had been preaching. That's something, isn't it? To uncover the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they broke the roof up. These guys were anxious to receive a miracle. The four friends of the fellow who had the palsy. Uh, they let down the bed wherein the sick of their palsy lay. Fifth verse. When Jesus saw their faith, you know, the faith was the actions they went through. They tried their best for them to lift this guy up and to carry him across the crowd. They couldn't get through the crowds. They were so thick with people. And the, they didn't stop. They went up a stairway on the side or took ladders. I don't know how they did it. But they got up on the roof of the house. And when they got up on the roof, they broke it up so they could make enough room to lower their friend down to the presence of where Jesus was. And uh, that's faith to do that. Action on our part. Uh, carnal action on our part to get to a point where we are able to receive from the Lord. Sometimes you have to do that. Move things out the way in order to get to the Lord Jesus. And what's interesting to me is the Lord didn't say, uh, roof come open and let him come down. No, no, they have to tear it apart for them to lower the body of Christ. And that's the way Christ is today. That's where the Lord is today. Uh, and you wonder, well, why did the Lord just open the door? Why did the Lord just do this? Because he's the Lord and he's trying to build our faith. And so uh, he watches us to see how much effort we're going to expend to re receive what he said he's going to be willing to give. And so the same thing's happening today. You've got to be willing and obedient and you eat the good of the land. Isaiah 1 and 19. You've got to be willing and obedient. Then you'll eat the good, the resources that God has for you. Yeah, You've you got to be willing. And that's why most people are, they don't want to spend the effort. They just want it to fall in their lap. None of it ever falls in their lap. The last week we were talking about the pool of um, um, uh, Myra, the bitter pool. How that uh, they have to throw, uh, you have to do something that's tied into the things of God. They have to throw a tree, a type of the Lord Jesus Christ, into their circumstance, into their bitter pool, in order for it to be sweetened. Here, these men... If they had not taken him up the side of the house, tore up the roof, and lowered the man, he would not have received his healing. So there's so many things that need to be manifest in the lives of people, but they're not willing and they're obedient. To, and therefore, they don't receive the good of the land. They don't receive the things that God intends for them to have. They don't want to spend the effort. They just want the Lord to just lay it on me, Lord, drop it on me, Lord. And they don't want to um, recognize the effort that's required to get you positioned to receive from the hand of God. And so people saw this. And can you imagine the faith even those guys said? They had no idea that Jesus was going to heal that friend, but they believed that he would if they could just get in close proximity to him. And so you'll see examples of this throughout the New Testament where people are reaching for the Lord to touch the hem of his garment. Praise the Lord. Shouting out to him a person who has lost his sight for the master to stop, pay him some attention. So it takes effort to receive from the hand of God. Even as you've been with him, even after you've been with him a long time, we still have to use the abilities we have to contact and get the uh, attention of the Lord. Wherever you are, you have to use your means that you have with you to reach the Lord Jesus. Let's go to the sixth verse. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there. You always got these. And reasoning in their hearts. See, you always got these people, they ain't going to do nothing to help nobody. Scribes, writers, you know, so-called educated. No, no, be educated. I'm educated. 
But some people, they go the wrong way. You know, they got a warped view of God and the things of God. They always got a complaint. They're always trying to find some weakness or some reason that uh, they can catch on to. It's the devil that's controlling them. Some verse. Why does this man uh, thus speak blasphemies? Uh, who can forgive sin but God only? Let's go back. Let's go back to the fifth verse. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven. So the Lord Jesus didn't say, Son, be healed. He said, your sin be forgiven him. And he's making a connection here between uh, the, the uh, physical body and the spiritual. See, sins are in the spiritual realm. Uh, being forgiven of sins, that's a spiritual thing. Uh, having your physical body healed, that's a natural thing. So Jesus turned things up topsy-turvy but he, because he used the wrong term as far as man's concerned. But this man, he's got the palsy. Why in the world he needs to be forgiven his sin? He needs to be healed in his physical body. Jesus is making no different, no distinction. You need to be healed in your body and you also need to be healed in your, your spirit. But look at the sixth verse. But there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts. Look at the seventh verse. Why doeth this man, the Lord Jesus, thus speak blasphemies? Who, who can forgive sin but God? See, they only. So he, they triangulate. We don't, they didn't even know that he was the son of God. He was God, praise the Lord. But they didn't recognize it or they wouldn't believe it. Eighth verse. And immediately when Jesus perceived in his spirit that they uh, so reasoned within themselves, he said unto them, why reason ye these things in your hearts? Whether it is easier, this is the Lord Jesus, you may do a miracle. Watch this, watch. Is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee? Let's pause for a second. Or to say, arise and take up your bed and walk. So he's saying, hey, whether I tell him, sins be forgiven thee, arise, take up your bed and walk. It's easy. Which one is easy to say? It doesn't matter. It's the same category. The Lord came to alleviate sins, sickness, and disease amongst the people. And so he's demonstrating that right now. That whether he asks you uh, for your spirit man to be healed, or whether he asks you for your physical body to be healed, it's the same request. Because both of them are taken care of by the Lord Jesus Christ when he died on Calvary's cross. He bore our sins and our weaknesses in his body on the tree, that we being dead to sins might live unto life. Praise the Lord. So live unto righteousness, to live unto right standing with God. So he wants us to be in right standing with him as far as our spirit person is concerned, making him the Lord of our life. And he wants us to be in right standing in terms of our physical man is concerned, this um, um, earthen vessel, praying, the, the excellency of the Lord in this earthen vessel, this physical body needs to be healed because it carries uh, the things of God, the attributes of God, the qualities of God, the testimony of God from place to place. And if it is being uh, impaired by some pain or some sickness and disease, then the Lord is available to heal it so that his mission can be completed here in the earth realm. Praise the Lord. True, be, you being healed and you giving a mighty testimony of the wonder working God work of the Lord, or by them simply seeing you being healed by the Lord Jesus Christ after being sick for 30 years or 40 years or five years or however long it was, and then supernaturally yeah, healing the manifest, that has an impact upon those who are watching. Notice here in the ninth verse, what is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or arise and take up thy bed and walk? <clears throat> Look at the 10th verse. But that ye may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins, he wanted to know that I have authority over sins, not just disease, sickness, and disease, but also over sins as well. Uh, he said to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise and take up thy bed and go thy way into thine house. 12 verse. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went from the, before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed. People are amazed at watching this. And glorify God, saying, We've never saw it on this fashion. Notice this. People they expect the Lord to do things one way. He does it a different way. Uh, the man was lowered from the roof. He uh, spoke to him. And he took up his bed and walked. Praise God. He didn't do all the 15 volumes over him or whatever. Didn't say nothing about oil being there. He just spoke the word only. And the servant was healed. Praise the Lord. And that's where we should be today. That all these rules and restrictions man's put in the way. And the question is, what they going to do? Nothing. 
What can they do? Nothing but run their lips and uh, always resistant to the things of God. No, that's what the, the Lord Jesus, later on, he got upset with him too. A bunch of hypocrites they have a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. And that's the way a lot of people are today. They, uh, they may be well versed in the scriptures and things of that nature, but they don't have an ounce of faith. They don't believe God can do anything or will do anything. And so they always have some reason why he can't. Or he blasphemed because he acting like he's God when he's not. Let's just see what he's going to do. Praise the Lord. Uh, it'll be clear whether he's doing this of God. Praise God. doesn't necessarily mean he has to be God in order to do things that are godly, in order to do supernatural feats. That's because they haven't been listening and paying attention uh, for what, to what Jesus Christ had been saying about whom he is. Uh, he said he was the Son of God, and he is very God himself. But he did a lot of things as a human being. He took on the pale of flesh, and when he did things as a human being, he did it via the Holy Spirit. So it wasn't him functioning as God, doing it, although he was very God. But he wasn't doing any miracles and signs and ones and miracles because he was God. Uh, he was doing it because he was imbued with the power of the Holy Spirit. He did nothing unless he heard the Father tell him to do it. So he listened to the Father, and then the Father told him to do something. Then the Almighty, powerful Holy Ghost overwhelmed him and allowed him to do the manifestation of power in the lives of those who are here in the earth realm. Praise the Lord. People said, we've never seen nothing like in this fashion. Uh, Jesus placed sickness in the same category. I want you to get this. Uh, as sin. He presented them both as enemies of the abundant life. Uh, you can't have an abundant life when you're hurting all the time. I, it's hard. You, you can't do effective work for Christ when you're hurting. And, uh, you know, when I have something that go wrong in my body, that's the first thing I tell the Lord. I said, Lord, I, I wouldn't call for this charter. Uh, this earthen vessel that I'm in, uh, this earth suit is not acting right. Uh, my knee hurting or my back is hurting. And that's going to have an adverse effect on my ability to be able to declare the gospel. Because when the pain hits, it's hard for me to concentrate on what I'm supposed to say. So I need you to come heal this uh, earth suit so it can function properly, so I can do my real purpose, which is the spiritual part which you've placed inside of me. So, Lord God, you said you'd satisfy me with long life and show me your salvation. So I ask you to satisfy me with long life, that you'd heal my body, allow me to function and do my purpose here in the earth realm. And I'm being hindered right now by uh, an ailment that you said you already bore for me. So I ask that you manifest that today, heal my body, so I can be an effective minister of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, you have to come boldly to the throne of grace to obtain mercy and grace to help in a time of need. And that's how you do it. I come boldly to the throne of grace. I say, Father God, this is not in sync with what you said about me. I can't do your work effectively if you don't heal my body. Can't do my, your work effectively if you don't take away the pain. I ask you, Lord God, as the high priest of my confession, to heal me, Lord God, in accordance with what Jesus did when he died on Calvary's cross. And uh, uh, cover me by the blood. Heal my physical body. Heal my mind. Heal whatever is out of kelter and in sync with your word. Heal me in sync so I can do the will and the bidding of the Lord. My assignment on earth is not up yet. I ask you to re restore me, Lord, whole and sound. So there'll be a mighty testimony. I pray you get glorified because I'll tell other people about your works in Jesus' name. Amen. So we need to know the word of God so we know what our rights and our privileges are. And we ask the Lord, come on, Lord. Come on, Lord. Just like, really, you know, we talk about Moses. You know, the people crying. He cried out to the Lord. Nothing wrong with crying out to the Lord. Once we cry in his word. And the Lord gave him insight on what was available to bring uh, fresh water to their circumstance in Myra, and he grew the tree a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. This is what we need to do. We need to take the branch and throw him into every circumstance and situation that opposes us, and healing will take place. Deliverance will take place. Praise God. A manifestation of the power of God will take place, but we just have to exercise the, the weapons of our warfare, the tools that the Lord has given us. Mighty true God for the pulling down of strongholds and the casting down of imaginations. What are these things of imagination? The devil trying to get us to believe that the Lord has been left us alone, that he doesn't care about our pain and all of that. And so we need to just go to the bowl, bowl to the throne of grace and just say, this is what the devil said about you, Lord. I ask you to turn it around, reverse the decision in Jesus' name. I look, Lord, expectantly for a manifestation of what I've asked you. And that's what it's all about. You can't be a wimpy Christian. This is proven by the rhetorical question that is posed 
uh, by the religious leaders that were observing him. Mark, the second chapter, that verse. Whether it's easier to say words of Jesus again to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, arise and take up thy bed and walk. Jesus, in essence, said to them uh, the salvation that has been provided for the soul, listen to me, uh, has also been provided for the physical body. Salvation for the physical body. That's what healing is. Uh, the alleviation of sin heals the soul or spirit. And the alleviation of disease heals the physical. Praise God, the physical body. By saving the lost and healing the sick, Jesus Christ was fulfilling his call by the Apostle John and what he had wrote in 1 John 3 and 8, the things that he demonstrated during his uh, uh, life here on earth, the Lord Jesus demonstrated who he was, uh, 1 John 3 and 8. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. So all the people he healed and delivered and set free, uh, he was destroying the works of the devil. Praise the Lord. Everything Jesus did during his earthly sojourn was performed in obedience, I said this before, to Father God. If the Father did not commission something, Jesus did not do it. This is confirmed by his response to the Pharisees, who were religious leaders, that scoffed at his ministry. John 8 and 28. Then Jesus said unto these religious leaders, uh, When ye lifted up the Son of God, the Son of Man, no, when ye have lifted up, it hadn't happened yet, they hadn't put him on the cross yet. Lifted up means being put up on the cross. Then shall ye know that I am he. He said, your eyes are going to be blinded, many of you, until you see me hanging there on the cross. And then many of your eyes will open up and realize I'm really who I say I am. And that I do nothing, here we go, of myself. Jesus said, I don't do nothing during my earthly sojourn here. I don't do nothing of myself, but as my father hath taught me. I speak these things. He said, everything I did, or everything I do, is based upon what the Father has told me. Look at John 8 and 29. And he that sent me is with me. Jesus is speaking here. The Father hath not left me alone. So the Lord hath left me alone here. He sent me, but he hath left me alone. He's always with me. For I do always those things that please him. So, so this man here that I just raised from the dead, uh, that is pleasing to the Lord. He told me I need to raise him from the dead. Praise God. He gives me instructions on what I need to do, and I always do it. And he demonstrates to us what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to emulate and mark the perfect one, the Lord Jesus. So uh, if he has permission to heal and deliver, we have permission to heal and deliver. The works I do, shalt I do, and greater works than these shalt I do, because I go into the Father. Notice it. He said, if you hear his word and abide in him, the works that he do, we will do, and greater works. In St. John 14, 12, he talks about that. He that believes in me, the works that I do shall he do, and greater works than he shall he do, because I go to the Father. If you ask the Father anything in my name, I will give it thee. Uh, if you ask the Father anything in my name, I will um, bless you with it. Praise God. He went through that two iterations. Let us know that he planned to respond to us uh, if we are abiding in his word, doing those things that are pleasing in his sight, that his purpose and his plan is to always answer us in the, in the positive. Praise the Lord. The, the blessings of the Lord are yea and yea, and amen to those in Christ Jesus. So if you call him to help you, praise, he, he always say yes, praise God. The things you're doing in sync with the things of God, he's going to say yes to you. And that should be your expectation. I'm going to ask the Lord to help me with this. And uh, he said, it's a yea and amen, me so be it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your yea, 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 and thank you for your so be it for what I'm going through right now. Because I listen to you too. I'm led by what the word says. And the word makes it clear to me that healing is part of my right and my privilege. I'm not experiencing it right now. So I ask you to say, yay, yay, and so be it. Bring my so be it into now so I can experience it in reality. All the works that Jesus did uh, were good and in agreement with God's perfect will. The apostle Peter in his discourse to Cornelius the centurion and his household during their Con, uh, conversion um, preached these words. So this is uh, one of the apostles. He's also reiterating what the Lord Jesus said, Apostle Peter, 
And we should be doing the same thing. The works that I do shalt thou do and greater works than these. So that's just, right now, that's what Peter is doing right now. Jesus has already been ascended on high. He's seated at the right hand of the majesty on high. And so this is after the resurrection of Christ Jesus that Peter is preaching to those individuals who had gathered there to hear him preach. And so we have a right to do the same thing Peter did. Said Acts 10 and 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. He's preaching this. Uh, with the Holy Ghost and with power. He had power. Holy Ghost and power. Uh, who went about doing good. So Jesus went about doing good. That's what we're going to do. I'm doing good right now by teaching to you. Whether you're resistant or whether you're receptive, I'm preaching the word anyway. And healing all that were oppressed of the devil. I'm preaching, praise God, to help all those who are oppressed of the devil. Not oppressed of God, oppressed of the devil. And preachers are preaching that ought to be ashamed of themselves. When there's oppression in our physical bodies, oppression in our mind, it didn't come from God, it came from the devil. And all his cohorts, praise God and lies and things that he's dis disseminated here amongst those who are uh, unwary of the things of God. All that were oppressed of the devil, again, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And, and so uh, the same thing, so Peter is reiterating the fact that the Lord was with uh, Jesus, and the Lord is with me today. And so he, uh, that's our right and our privilege, praise God, to, to de declare and to live the same kind of life that Jesus lived during his earthly sojourn. The scripture makes it clear that doing good uh, is healing all that are oppressed of the devil. No, not the oppressed of the devil. Praise God. Demonized by the devil. If you look at the uh, Greek word. Uh, our elder brother Jesus has left us power, a powerful legacy, and a precedence. Uh, for he said the following, and I've already, somebody, <laughs> I didn't even know it was coming, y'all, but the Lord wanted you to hear it again. St. John 14, 12, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the Lord Jesus, speaking to those that were gathered with him, and also to us, by implication, all scriptures are given by, or God breathed, are given by um, uh, uh, the word of God, are all given by the sentiments of the Holy Ghost, that God breathed, and he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go into the Father, Jesus tell him that all those works that he's doing, we're going to do also. Because he's going, he's going to be seated at the right hand of the majesty on high, where he ever liveth to make intercession for us, is what the Apostle Paul says. Let's look at St. John 14 and 13. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name. So anything we ask in the name of the Lord, he, those who believe on him. I believe on him. I hope you believe on him. If you don't believe on him, it's not going to work. And whatsoever you ask. Uh, in my name, those things that are in agreement with what I've taught, uh, those that have been ascended to by me, uh, you're not going to be asked for something that the, the Lord does not support. Because you know his heart, praise God. And you know you're asking according to the authority of his name. And he does not sanction things that are contrary to what the word has said. Let's get it. Whatsoever you shall ask in my name. So it's got to be in agreement with the name of the Lord Jesus. You just can't call it in the name of Jesus. Well, and if you're doing it by his name, so what does he ascend to? Uh, what are the things that he uh, support? What did he teach us in his word that he would sanction, and that he would agree with? So you can't just make stuff out of your head uh, about Jesus. It's got to be some pinned already about it or implied very strongly and vigorously in the word of God. That will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. You know, we had a lot of people who twisted the word of God uh, last year. You know, with all these false prophecies about who's going to be president and all of that. A lot of other false things that went forth, too. You can't trust those kind of people. Don't be listening to them. Go find yourself another church if you're still there. No, they can't just, and most of them not saying they, they're trying to make up excuses why they were wrong. Instead of just coming clean. Because they got the spirit of the devil in. Uh, the lion spirit that the devil has. And so uh, if they didn't did that for a whole year and you're still there, you need to get up. And leave. Because if you don't, it's going to be your fault when you stand before the Lord. And stand around because you got all your friends and acquaintances and stained glass windows and gym and a place for you to meet young people of your age and, and all the other niceties that go along with it. the field trips five times a year where you can go to the snow, you can go to the beach, and you don't have to pay a dime, just get on the bus and all. You better think about more than that. Life does not consist of the things that we have. There's a lot more to life than that. The abundance of the things that we have, the cars that we're able to drive, the money we get, the college scholarships that are made available by the college school, 
Well, you have to cast all that stuff away to live for Jesus. He'll, he'll provide for you. You don't have to have that stuff available. The Lord will create it out of nothing. He'll formulate it. The people who have the money, he'll end up giving it to you. The scholarship, they'll actually give you a scholarship. Look, I know what I'm talking about. I had a scholarship. Uh, praise God. Let me say it. I was in my last year of college at Berkeley. I think I had three months left. Had no money left and uh, to graduate. And I went and asked, I think it's called a Greenpeace Scholarship. I didn't know they had a scholarship. They had one tucked away. They gave me a scholarship to cover my expenses for three months. At the end of the three months, I graduated from UC Berkeley, country boy, that's good in the big city. My daddy was dead. Mama didn't have any money. My relatives didn't have money. I was going to be kicked out in the streets with no education. But my God, that's the heart of the counselor to find me a coverage. The heart of kings in the hand of the Lord. And he turns it whithersoever he wills. I don't know why he gave me that scholarship, but I had favor from God. It was important for me to get my degree. It was important for me to go to the sciences. It was important for me to have the uh, ex uh, life that I live in corporate America. It was important for me to have a scientific degree. So the Lord gave me the money I needed to cover the three months that I, for which I had no money. And then after the three months were covered, within a week or so, I had a job in San Francisco. Praise God. Working at a major corporation. Praise God. I was one of the few first black people working there in San Francisco in my particular capacity. Uh, IBM Corporation back in the 1960s. So I don't care if it's the 1960s, 70s. 2000, the same God sits on the throne. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. You got to believe that. And if you do, God will show himself strong to those who walk upright before him. So I don't just have testimonies that are spiritual. That's a natural testimony well, God help me. Nobody else will give me money. The Lord found a way that I went and asked, is there any way I can stay in college? And they had looked, and the lady came back. We have a special scholarship, the only one that's available. We're going to give it to you. It was enough to cover my three months and for me to finish college. So, what I'm sharing with you about experience I've experienced it. The one, the working power of God in my life. You can laugh all you want, but I'm going to get the last laugh. Praise God. The Bible says you shall have laughed him in derision. I know it's been some con I artist that's playing the laughing game, but I'm telling you, the blessings of God come and make of rich and add of no sorrow with it. It's wonderful when the Lord answers your prayers and you look back in retrospect so you can help other people. So he heals, he delivers, he sets free, provides money, he creates things out of nothing, he gives it to you, and you can say, God is still the same. He's still creating things out of nothing, giving it to the child of God. And I have a whole host of testimonies like that. He didn't just do one for me. He did many, many in my lifetime. So he's, he's, he can be trusted. But you're going to have to submit yourself to him. You can't be playing games, being on the periphery. You've been on the periphery long enough. You know, you've been out there watching us and peeking from afar for five years, for ten years, and then you didn't, and then you gave up, or you're still peeking. Quit peeking and get inside of the things of God and allow the Lord to develop you to the full statue of Christ Jesus. 
and to bring all of the things that he really been hold set aside stuff that you don't know anything about because you won't submit fully to the Lord. There's so many people I'm watching that just won't come completely clean with God. Uh, you need to come completely clean with him. And he'll never give you everything he has for you. And worry about what other people say. They're going to always say something. Who cares what they say? The Bible says their breath is in their nostril. They may not even be here tomorrow. You know, I, I, right now, we're waiting for our cat. Somebody stole our cat. Uh, that's just the devil. And we haven't seen him for three days now. So I'm waiting for the cat to come back. But once he's coming out, I'm still going to serve God. Yeah, and God knows where the cat is. And so he's testing our nerves and our attitudes and things of that nature. And uh, so the first time we got the cat, the cat was gone for I don't know how long. We found him. And so God knows how to bring back what, the, what you done lost. And if he doesn't, you still trust him. You still follow him. And so here you are worried about things that happen. All kinds of things happen in this world. We live in a fallen world. Praise the Lord. The prince and the power of the air is controlling it. And uh, the only way to stop him from controlling you is by submitting yourself to the Lord Jesus Christ. And then that way, he controls your life, not the devil. The devil doesn't have the last say. The Lord has the last say if you're committed and devoted to him. And so things will come because the world is a fallen world. The Lord hasn't corrected everything yet. But at the end of this age, he's going to clean it all up. In fact, he's going to purify the earth that we're living in. And all this stuff that's bad that happens, all this broken stuff that breaks, and there'll be nothing breaking anymore. Everything's going to be perfect. We'll have a perfect world. But since Adam gave his rights up to Satan, we got a broken world right now. And with Christ Jesus, he helps us to make it through this broken world. Praise the Lord. That uh, angles that man come up with, you can't even, sit, can't even sit and figure it out. But the Lord can. So if you submit yourself to the Lord, then he'll help you get around, step around the pitfalls that they done set up for you. And there's a lot of things that, uh, the contrary, you got a chance to see how, country, to some degree, how contrary people can be. People who use that put your support in and comfort us in. They turn around and let you down, praise the Lord. And so that's because you're not supposed to put your trust in man. His, his breath is in his nostrils. You put your trust in Jesus and live for him the way that you should. Be kind, praise God, and obedient and submissive to wherever you can. And the Lord will get you to wherever you need to go. Let me finish this verse here. Y'all yeah, got me excited here. Uh, St. John 14 and 3. Whatsoever you ask in my name, that will I do. The Lord is saying this to us. And notice, it's to those who believe on me. You got to believe in the Lord first. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. He said it by me answering your question, answering your prayer and your petition. So the Father is glorified in the Son. So if he doesn't answer any questions and doesn't do anything for you that's supernatural, then he's not, be, he's not going to be glorified in the Son. So the Lord gets glory. If you abide in me, my word abide in you, shall ask what you will, and it shall be done. For by this the Father is glorified that you bring forth much, much fruit, so shall you be my disciples. Jesus said that in St. John 15 and 7. So he's saying the same thing here again. Uh, that the Father, no, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, the Lord Jesus said this, uh, St. John 14 and 3. He said, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. The Father is glorified in the Son whenever we ask, ask something that's in agreement with what His will and purpose is for us as believers. St. John 14, 14. If you shall ask anything in my name, this Lord Jesus speaking, I will do it. Notice, he, if you, those who believe in the Lord, that doesn't mean you're going to be asked for something you're not supposed to. You know what the Lord will do and how He does it. Yeah, so you, you have a, a, a pure heart. Uh, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. You know, the Beatitude says that in uh, Matthew, the fifth chapter. So that's what you do. You, you are beatitude, your Beatitude is in sync with what Jesus said we're supposed to be. And that's how you carry yourself all the time, whether people are looking or not. They have their own ideas about how you're supposed to do things. Do it the Bible way. Do it the way the Lord Jesus has demonstrated through the Scriptures. And uh, when it's something they're trying to do to change you, don't let them change you. Just say, no, I can't do it that way. I don't subscribe to that. And, and what you'll find that even sometimes, even your own family, uh, people just look at you strange. He's strange. You know, he's stuff. He's too hard on that. Well, some things we have to stay with, especially when we know that ultimately it's the devil behind something else that sounds so good and sounds so pure, but the, he has a motive. And his motive is always to take you off of cue, take you off of what the Lord has said about. And we can be nice and kind or whatever. We just don't allow them to move us, praise God, by every wind of doctrine. 
that so easily beset us. And that's what it is, a wind of doctrine. It's to, to change what you believe in to, to ever so slightly, to tweak it so it's really not what the Word of God says. And that's what happened last year. You saw them people lined up and, and scaling the walls. Uh, and most of them supposed to have been evangelicals, a lot of them, called scaling the walls of the, the capital, tearing up the windows and threatening people and hurting folks and killing a few folks. Uh, these supposed to be Christians, a lot of them, or at least they had the Christian sentiments. And uh, look at what they did. That's because the doctrine got tweaked. And the doctrine did not sync with the doctrine that the Lord substantiates, which basically is a, is a gospel of love. See, the Bible says our faith works by love. Anything that's not of love, the agape kind of love, the, ben, the beneficent type of love that we're supposed to exhibit to others, if, they got, if you're getting ready to do something or submit yourself to any kind of ideology that goes counter to what that love has taught, that's of the devil. It's easy. You don't have to know a whole bunch of scriptures to know that. Uh, and uh, if you know your Bible better, then you won't be misled by anybody. Praise God. You'll always be Johnny on the spot. You'll always make the right decisions. And if you don't, you see, the Bible says that we're not supposed to, to depend on what our thought processes are. Lean not to thine own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge him. And he shall direct your paths. See, we have paths in front of us. Whether we take the wrong paths, if our heart is right, the Lord will get you back to the right path. So you can get misled for a while, but if you're a child of God, the Lord will take you off that path. That's what I'm telling some of you right now. It's still part of these damnable heresies. It's time to leave. Pray, turn over a new leaf. Go somewhere else. Praise God. Get the pure, unadulterated word and grow and develop in the things of God. Praise God. So Jesus spoke, he's spoken to us as well. In Acts the 10th chapter 34, verse, Apostle Peter opened his mouth and he said, Of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. I, I like that, we need that right now. And so often we're looking at what God has done for those people, what God's doing. For, well, he'll do the same thing for you. You'll have a testimony. I just shared just a little snippet uh, in passing. I had forgotten about that, it just came back to my mind. I have a whole bunch of them, a whole bunch of testimonies where only the Lord could be given credit. For what happened to me. You know, I didn't have nobody lined up giving me no money or nothing. I had no rich auntie. I, I couldn't call my mom for any money. She didn't have that money. We were, at that time, we were giving her money. What little bit that we had. Uh, the literal meaning of the phrase, respect to a person, derived from the Greek word, uh, I'm not going to pronounce it, it's sort of difficult, uh, is an acceptor of a face. See, the Lord doesn't accept your faith. He, he accepts your heart. Or exhibiting partiality towards a person. So he doesn't care what color you are. He, he, he looks at the color of your heart. Is it, is it uh, submitted to the devil? Or is it submitted to the things of God? Is it the color of the blood, the Lord Jesus Christ, what he shared for us? Despite the conclusion, uh, the conclusion you may have drawn as a result of observing what is happening in our society, God does not show partiality towards any race of people. I don't know. The Lord must want you all to hear that. I didn't even know that was in here, but it is. <laughs> Praise God. Despite I was preparing for the end time this morning, so I didn't have a chance to even look at the message. Despite your environment uh, or your socioeconomic status, you, if you meet God's conditions found in his word, the Lord will respond to you for the prophet Samuel said the following. 1 Samuel 16, 17b. The Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward, there we go, appearance, but the Lord looketh at the heart. See, uh, their heart's not right. See, don't look at you right. I, I, this is Black History Month. I think this is uh, the last day of, that month, of this month. I know I'm going to have one about a, <laughs> a Black History message here, but this is the essence of it right now. It's people looking at you the wrong way. Praise the Lord. They need to look at you as the way God would have you look at other human beings. Man draw his conclusions based upon what he sees externally. God, but God, this is key, but God draws his from what he sees internally within our hearts. The Apostle Paul uh, charges believers to emulate God in the way we per, um, perceive things in the world, uh, the earth realm, saying the following, 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. Uh, For we walk by faith and not by sight. Satan and his uh, cohorts are masters of deception and, and defeat. He knows that if he can convince you to believe the negative report 
about your worth and potential, you will never aspire to greatness that Christ has ordained for you as part of the beloved. Because of the seemingly uh, unending challenges that have accosted you since becoming a child of God, some of you have become disillusioned and disconnected from the uh, disconnected from the Lord Jesus. This is a significant mistake because the Apostle Paul, speaking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, said this of Jesus, Colossians two and nine. For in Him, in Jesus Christ, uh, dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead body. Any and everything you need is in Jesus. Let me just pause. If you need something, it's in Jesus. The essence of this verse is that whatever you need is found in Jesus. When you realize this and begin to appropriate your rights as a son of God, you have access to the Lord's unlimited supply. For the Apostle Paul continues saying the following, Colossians 2 and 10, And ye are complete in him, in Christ Jesus, which is the head of of all principalities and powers. Your theology should not be formed by your circumstances, but rather by what God's word says about situations confronting you in life. Uh, the challenges you experience does not necessarily mean that you are out of fellowship or that God is somehow displeased with you just because things don't work out right, uh, but rather that challenges that confront you are the result of living in this fallen world, I said that. The Apostle Paul confirmed this statement in 1 Corinthians 10 and 13. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Uh, for God is faithful, who will not allow you to be suffered, or be tested above that which you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. The Apostle Paul says that the tests that you are encountering are common to being human, being man. But you do not need to be fearful because God is faithful. The word temptation uh, is the word parasmos. It means a putting of proof uh, to ex and experimentation of good and experience of evil. In general terms, uh, it applies to our adversaries. The reason for tests is embodied in the word temptations. Notice that testing occurs so that we believers can, I'm almost finished, experiment with good and have experience with evil opposition. The words of God's uh, gospel song uh, captures the importance of testing in our lives, saying, if I never had a problem, how would I know that God could solve them? Uh, some of you probably haven't heard that, but I have. And it's a powerful song. And people can really sing those that song who has been uh, living for the Lord and have entertained challenges and problems and was able to overcome them by the power of God and by the faith in God that resides in them. God bless you. The Lord took me down a slightly different path here. He wanted you to hear that uh, based on my testimony. God has no respect to a person's. If you got a challenge you need the Lord to answer, he will answer it and do exceedingly abundantly above. All you ask a thing, according to the power that operates within you, in Jesus' name, amen. Go with God. Hello. Thank you for listening to this resource. If you would like to receive our audio DVD catalog or desire more information about our ministry, you may write to us at P.O. Box 612-822, San Jose, California, 95161-2822. Or you may request information via our website at www.sjwofcc.org. We look forward to hearing from you. God bless you.